So we're here at the Arcane Wonders booth where Call of Duty was announced earlier this week. I'm gonna give you a quick look at like how it plays. We got to shoot a full playthrough of Call of Duty, the board game that will be coming out. It was me and Devin. We played through about six rounds of it. It was a ton of fun. But before that comes out, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of how it plays. So you can see some of the, the tactical nature of the design. It is really, it is a really great implementation of a tactical shooter game where you are having to decide where you're gonna be, but also which direction you're gonna be facing, which direction you're gonna face for, or you're gonna enter from. I think it's a really well done implementation of the chaos of Call of Duty. So let's take a look at how it plays, kind of the, the basic flow of the game. And then again, next week we'll have a six round playthrough that goes through the beginner and the advanced versions. And we also will be doing more with, the, with this game in the studio that will be much prettier Play through next week was shot in a glorified closet, but we did have four cameras on it so you can see the hidden movement boards and all that. So let's go look at just kind of how the game plays. So the core of this game is programming combat. So you have, each player is gonna have their own hidden map. There's another one under there or over there. It's behind a board or, or a player shield that is never going to be removed. You are always going to be playing behind that player shield. So you're gonna program your movement here and then play out your movement on the main board until you get within line of sight of another player, at which point, no matter where you are in your movement, um, combat is going to start immediately. So you have four movement actions available. These dots right here are just for reference. Uh, so you have four movement actions and you're gonna program not only your movement, but also the direction that you're facing with that movement. So think of it like you're, do you want to come here facing this way, pointing that way? or do you want to come into this spot facing this way? Or do you want to even come in facing backwards because you think the other player might be trying to flank you? So you're going to program your movement. So from this spot right here, which corresponds to here on the board, let's say we want to move up here and then up this way, but then maybe we think that the other player is coming down this side. So for our third movement, we're going to face back this way and then fourth movement, we're gonna come over here to the flag because this map is set up for domination. So you want to get to the flag to secure that space to get points. So to execute this movement, you would do one, two, three, and then four. The other player is gonna do the same thing. They're gonna program their movement and they are going to, you're going to, you're going to step through those moves one at a time and check after each move to see if you have line of sight. Line of sight is determined by the colored lines on the board. It's not adjacency, it's colored line. This space right here, even though it's not physically connected to it, it does have a green connecting line. So you have line of sight there. Um, so we're going to do this move here. Then we're going to do this move here. And let's say at that same time, this player moved down here facing this way. So we now have line of sight. We are now going to execute a battle after move two, even though we have these four unplaced movements, we're going to execute a battle on this space right here. And again, blue is facing red, red is facing this way. So the battle is executed with these boards and dice. So you have a tug of war right here and a rock, paper, scissors over here with the dice. So the first thing you're gonna check is if you are on target. So on target means that you're facing the other player. So blue is on target, red is not. So if you're on target, and I'm only gonna do this on one board so I'm not walking back and forth across the screen or the, the table, but if you're on target, so let's say that red was on target. Red is on target, they're going to move this forward two spaces, so that goes up to five. That's going to be five combat points. If red had a wound or red was caught sprinting, they would go down one space for that. So you're gonna resolve on target and move it up or down uh, based on some other situations. Then you're going to see how many spaces apart they are. And this is actual spaces. So this is one space apart. So you're gonna start your combat on the bottom. So you have one space or two or more spaces. Your combat starts on the reticle icon depending on where you are. So this is gonna start right here and then you are going to choose your dice and the card you're gonna play. Now, the way that this board works is wherever your combat ends on this scale right here is going to be 
converted into damage based on the card that you play. So let's just use the top one right here. So this is going to be zero for 10 or 15 points based on what color your cube is at the end of the round. Um, it's also going to give a bonus reticle, which is gonna move this cube up one more space. Then you're going to get your dice. You are always gonna play with seven dice. Green dice help you determine first strike, which are these lightning bolts, and they have shields, which are gonna move your the, the opponent back down on their scale. You have blue dice, which are gonna move you up on the scale, and you have red dice, which are just, which are damage. That's just damage points. So let's just grab two green, two red, and three blue. For this, you can use any combination of dice. You are always gonna play with seven dice. So again, we start where the radical is. We're gonna roll our seven dice. We're gonna resolve those dice. So I have one, two, three, four on the blue. That was not very good, but I'm gonna move this up one, two, three, four spaces. I also have a card with one radical on it. So that's gonna move me up an additional space. Now we are going to check green. So whoever has the most lightning bolts and some cards are gonna have lightning bolt bonuses in this space, but whoever has the most lightning bolts gets first strike. If it's a tie, no one gets first strike. So first strike is going to move this up one more. So let's say the other player had no lightning bolts. Red got first strike. Red is going to move up one space on the board. So they're now at seven. So let's say that the red player did did roll a, a one, but ignore that lightning bolt. So they had one that is going to move me down one space. So I have one shield. The other player is going to move down, back down on the board, one space on their board. And then we just resolve damage. So we have moved up this board based on reticles, down the board based on the other player's green dice or any shields that they had, which is a good example. This right here, blue, ha it's not shield, it's cover, sorry. Blue had cover here, it's, it's directional. So blue had cover, red did not. So blue gets this cover token on their board, which is going to move me down two more spaces. So I'm gonna go there. And now that we have resolved cover, we have figured out first strike, we have resolved all of our dice, we're going to calculate our damage. I am still in orange, so that is gonna be 10 points plus six points for my, six points for the red dice, three each. So I'm at 16 plus seven, that is 23 points of damage. The other player is gonna do the same thing. They're gonna calculate their points. Whoever has the, the highest amount of damage wins. The other player is killed and then they will respawn somewhere on the board. They just can't, they can respawn, respawn anywhere other than line of sight from the opponent. So this player comes off. Blue can now respawn anywhere as long as it is not within line of sight of the opponent or line of sight of an objective, which in this play, in this case is that space right there. They can respawn anywhere else. They're going to do the same movement action and you are going to resolve that. We did combat after move two. So I have the choice as red to now decide if I'm going to finish my movement or if I'm going to stop. I can't partially finish it. I have to decide either finish it or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. I'm gonna move there, and then I'm gonna move there facing backwards, just like my token. And then I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna come this way. And I am now on the flag, which means that my flag token goes on this space. And when I move off of it, I control this. So now at the end of each round, I am going to have a point for killing the other player and a point for the flag and every round that I end with my token on that flag, I'm gonna get an extra point. So I would get two points on this track and you just decide how many points you're gonna to play to and I will lose control of this if I die or if the other player goes onto that spot, in which case they would put their flag there. So this game is a really good mix of tactically moving. It's not just moving spaces, it is moving intentionally, picking which direction you're gonna move figuring out where you think your opponent is gonna be because being on target, being pointed the way that they are, gives you an advantage right off the bat. It gives you two spaces, it gives you five extra points of damage right off the bat if you have correctly predicted where they're going to be. Now there are other things like grenades and proximity mines. There is ADS where you're aiming down site where you can pick a spot to lay down. You can't move from that spot or else you lose the bonus of that, but that is 
on this side of the board, if you choose to use ADS, if you choose to use that, then you start farther up. So you would start here instead of here if you are if you are ADS, if you are aiming down sight. But with that, there's there's other decisions to be made. You can play with the advanced mode where people have asymmetric decks. There are additional abilities that you can use. So this whole game, it feels like I think as best as you could make a game of Call of Duty where you're running through, you're checking down hallways, you're checking to make sure that you're facing the other person. If you get caught off guard, you're going to be at a disadvantage. And I love that they made it where it actually is directional, tactical, not just moving and checking line of sight. Again, line of sight is those colored lines on the board. There's no rulers. There's no, you don't have to check anything other than is there a colored line connecting me and the other player? If there is, you immediately do combat. And just like in a game of Call of Duty, as soon as combat starts, someone's not walking away from it. You're not gonna run away and get out of that alive. Now, sometimes both players will die in combat and that's a really fun kind of twist too. But the, the gameplay, figuring out where you're gonna respawn, figuring out where you're gonna be and just how you're gonna move around the board, how you're gonna defend the objective if you control that space, and the dice that you're gonna play, whether you're gonna be defensive, whether you feel like you might be outgunned, so you need to be defensive and try and get the other player weaker. It's all of these strategic decisions that you're gonna be making as you play the game. And it's just wonderful. It's just the, the I've played through many, many rounds of this at this convention, and I have loved every single one. It feels combat, it feels tactical. It's not just a guys on a map shooting each other feels tactical, unlike really any other tactical game that I've played. So I really like this. I really, I'm really excited to get it in studio and shoot some better playthroughs. Again, we do have a full playthrough coming out next week. The camera work is not the best, but it's gonna be your first chance to see this game in action with two players sitting down actually playing it. So that'll be coming out next week. Keep an eye out for that. As soon as that drops, I will put a link in the description of this video and put a little box up here at the top, most likely so that you can check that out. So. This is Call of Duty, the board game. It was announced on Monday of this week, right before the Gamma Expo. It is from Arcane Wonders. It is fantastic. If you have any questions about it, please let me know. I have become fairly well-versed and will continue to become more and more familiar with this game as we get to play it more, set up some preview stuff and just do more work with it. So yeah, Call of Duty, the board game. Love it so far, excited to play more. If you have any questions, let me know. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.